from Ezekiel 22 and 23. And, and from 1 Peter chapter 1. That's right. Okay, let's open in prayer. Yeah. Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you for this day. It's quite the weather we're having for November the 24th. Really, really nice. And uh, Lord, thank you. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, And you, son of man, will judge. Will you judge the blo bloody city, then cause her to know all her abominations? And you shall say, Thus saith the Lord God, A city shedding blood in her midst, so that her time will come, and that makes idols contrary to her interests, for defilement. You have become guilty by the blood which you have shed, and defiled by your idols which you have made. Thus you have brought your day near, and have come to your year. Therefore I have made you a reproach to the nations, and a mocking to all the lands. Those who are near, and those who are far away, you will mock, they will mock you and you of ill repute, full of turmoil. Behold, the rulers of Israel, each according to his power, have been in, in you for the purpose of shedding blood. They have treat, treated fathers and mothers lightly within you. The alien they have oppressed in your midst, and the fatherless and the widows they have wronged in you. You have despised my holy things and profaned my Sabbath. He always mentions that Sabbath thing, you know, as a world where people shop seven days a week, <clears throat> Sabbath is not honored anymore. Slanderous men have been in you for the purpose of shedding blood, and in you they have eaten at the mountain shrines. In your midst they have committed acts of lewdness, and in you they have uncovered their father's nakedness, and in you they have humbled um, her who ha was unclean in her menstrual period, and one committing abominations with his neighbor's wife, and another has lewdly defiled his daughter-in-law, and another in you has humbled his sister, his father's daughter. In you that have taken bribes to shed blood, and you have taken interest and in profit, and you have inquired, no, pardon me, injured your neighbors for gain by oppression, and you have forgotten me, declared the Lord your God. Notice that he's mentioned a few times about it being a sin to take interest for profit. So there's a lot of bankers and investors and <laughs> loans people who are not in the favor of God. Behold, then I smite my hand at your dishonest gain, which you have acquired, and at the bloodshed which is among you. Can your heart endure, or can your hand be strong in the days that I shall deal with you? I, the Lord, have spoken and shall act, and I shall scatter you among the nations, and shall disperse you through the lands, and I shall consume your uncleanness from you. And you will profane yourself in the sight of the nations, and you will know that I am the Lord. You must read the next and the Lord, And the word of the Lord came to me, <clears throat> saying, Son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. All of them are bronze and tin and iron and lead in the furnace. They are the dross of silver. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because all of you have become dross, therefore, behold, I am going to gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. As they gathered silver and bronze and iron and lead and tin into the furnace to blow fire on it in order to melt it. So I shall gather you in my anger and in my wrath, and I shall lay you there and melt you. And I shall gather you and blow on you with the fire of my wrath, and you will be melted in the midst of it. As silver is melted in the furnace, so you will be melted in the midst of it. And you will know that I, the Lord, have poured out my wrath on you. We went to Niagara Falls uh, <clears throat> for anniversary two, uh, two, <clears throat> two anniversaries ago. And we watched these men blow glass, and it was amazing what they do. You're reading the scripture. I didn't realize you can blow silver like you blow glass. And it was just amazing how they blew the glass and made various amazing things, bowls and vases and stuff like that. Verse 23, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, say to her, You are a land that is not cleansed of, or, or rained on in the days of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in her midst like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured lives, and they have taken treasures and 
precious things, and they have made many widows in the midst of her. Her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things, and they have made no distinction between the holy and the profane, and they have not taught the difference between the unclean and the clean, and they have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among them. Her princes within her are like wolves tearing the prey by shedding blood and destroying lives in order to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have smeared whitewash for themselves false visions and divinations lies for them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God when the Lord has not spoken. And the people of the land have practiced a oppression and committed robbery and they have wronged the poor and the needy and have oppressed the sojourners with justice and I searched for a man among them who should build up the wall and stand in the gate the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found not one not one worthy man in all the land Thus I have poured out my indignation on them, and I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their way I have brought upon their heads, declared the Lord God. Chapter 23. Chapter 23. Oh, Ohola and Oholabaz, sin and its consequences. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they played the harlot in Egypt. They played the harlot in their youth. There their breasts were pressed, and there their virgin bosom was handled. And their names were Ohala and the elder, and Ohalaba her sister. And they became mine, and they bore sons and daughters. And as for their names, Samaria is Ohala, and Jerusalem is Ohalaba. And Ohala played the harlot while she was mine, and she lusted after her lovers after the Syrians, her neighbors, who were clothed in purple, governors and officials, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. And she bestowed her harlotries on them, all of them were the choicest men of Assyria, and with all whom she lusted for, with all their idols she defiled herself. And she did not forsake her harlotries from the time in Egypt, and in her youth men had lain with her, and they handled her virgin bosom, and poured out their lust on her. Therefore I gave her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Syrian, after whom she lusted. They uncovered her nakedness, they took her sons and her daughters, but they slew her with the sword. Thus she became a byword among women, and they executed judgment on her. Now her sister Abalabah Abba, Abba, saw this, yet she more corrupt in her lust than she and her harlotries were more than the harlotries of her sister. She lusted after the Assyrian governors and officials and the ones near ma magnificently dressed, horsemen, riders, horses, all of them detestable young men. And I saw that she had defiled herself and they both took the same way. So she in in increased, she increased her bar um, harlotries and she saw more portrayed on the wall more images men. more and she saw more men pardon me portrayed on the wall images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion whatever that is mm. um, girded with belts on their loins with flowering turbans on their heads all of them looking like officers like the barbar uh, Babylonians in Chaldea and the land of her birth of their birth and when she saw them, she lusted after them and sent messengers to them in Chaldea. And the Babylonians came to her to the bed of love, and they defiled her with their harlotry. And when she had been defiled by them, she became disgusted with them. And she uncovered her harlotries and uncovered her nakedness. And then I became disgusted with her, as I had become disgusted with her sister. Yet she multiplied her harlotries remembering the days of her youth when she played the harlotry in the land of Egypt. And she lusted after their paramours, whose flesh is like the flesh of donkeys and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus, uh, thus you longed for the lewdness of your youth when the Egyptians handled your bosom because of the breasts of your youth. Therefore, O uh, 
O Ohalaba, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will arouse your lovers against you, from whom you were alienated, and I will bring them against you forever from every side. And the Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, uh, Pekod and Shoa and Koa, and all the Assyrians with them, uh, desirable young men, governors and officials, all of them, officers and men of renown, all of them riding on horses. And they will come against you with weapons, chariots and wagons, and with a company of people. They will set themselves against you on every side with buckler and shield and helmet, and shall commit the judgment to them, and I shall commit the judgment to them, and they will judge you according to their customs. And I will set my jealousy against you, that they may dwell with you in wrath, deal with you in wrath. They may remove your nose and your ears, and your uh, survivors will fall by the sword. They will take your sons and your daughters, and your survivors will be consumed by the fire. They will also strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewelry. Thus I shall make your lewdness and your harlotry brought from the land of Egypt to cease from you, so that you will not lift up your eyes to them or remember Egypt any more. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will give you into the hand of those whom you hate, into the hand of those from whom you were alienated, and they will deal with you in hatred, take all your property, and leave you naked and bare, and the nakedness of your harlotries shall be uncovered, both your lewdness and your harlotries. These things will be done to you because you have played the harlot with the nation, because you have defiled yourself with their idols, you have walked in the way of your sister, therefore I will give her a cup into your hand. Thus says the Lord God, you will drink your sister's cup, which is deep and wide. You will be laughed at and held in derision. It contains much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, the cup of horror and desolation, the cup of your sister Samaria, and you will drink it and drain it. Then you will gnaw its fragrance and tear your breasts, for I have spoken, declares the Lord God. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have for forgotten me and cast me behind your back, bear now the punishment of your lewdness and your harlotries. Verse 36. Moreover, the Lord said to me, Son of man, will you judge Ohala and Ohaba? They de then declare to them their abominations, for they have committed adultery, and blood is on their hands. Thus they have committed adultery with their idols, and even caused their sons, whom they have bore to me, to pass through the fire to them as food. Ooh, again they have done this to me, and they have defiled my sanctuary on the same day, and have profaned my Sabbath. For when they had slaughtered their children for their idols, they entered my sanctuary on the same day to profane it, and lo, thus they did within my house. Furthermore, they have even sent for men who come from afar, to whom a messenger was sent, and lo, they came, for whom you bathed. Paint, yeah, go ahead. You bathed, yeah. Painted your eyes and decorated yourself with ornaments. And you sat on a splendid couch with a table arranged before it, on which you had set my incense and my oil. And the sound of a um, carefree multitude was within her, and drunkards were brought from the wilderness with men of the common sort. And they put bracelets on the hands of the women and beautiful crowns on their heads. Then I said concerning he who was worn out by adulteries, will they now commit adultery with her when she is thus? But they went into her as they would go into a harlot. Thus they were into into Oboa, Ohola. Ohola and Ohoaba, and the lewd, the lewd women. But they righteous men will judge them with the judgment of adulteresses and with the judgment of women who shed blood because they are adulteresses and blood is on their hands verse 46 for thus says the lord god bring up a company against them and give them over to terror and plunder and the company will stone them with stones and cut them down with their swords they will slay their sons and their daughters and burn their houses with fire 
Thus I shall make lewdness cease from the land, that all women may be admonished and not commit lewdness, as you have done. And your lewdness will be requited unto you, and you will bear the penalty of worshiping your idols. Thus you will know that I am the Lord God. That's the end of Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to whom who was reside as aliens scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cap Cappadocia. Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be on yours in fullness measure. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith, a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with the joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your soul. As to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made careful search and an inquiry, seeking to know what person or time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicated as he predicted the suffering of Christ and the glory of his followers. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you in these things which you now have been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things under which angels long to look. Verse 13. <clears throat> Therefore, Gird your minds for action. Keep your sober keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be comforted or conform to the former lusts which are yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior because it is written you shall be holy for i am holy and if you address as father the one who uh, impartially judges according to each man's work conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay upon earth knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile, futile way of life inherited from your forefathers but with precious blood, as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last days for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have no, uh, since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls, for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not as seed, which is perishable, but imperishable. That is, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like the grass, and all its glory like the flowers of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord abides forever. And this is the word which was preached to you.